Hi, I'm Peter Ubel, and I'm eager to introduce you today to a new friend of mine, my book, Critical Decisions, September 2012, coming out. And I'm going to open up this video introduction to Critical Decisions the same way I opened the book, by telling you about Fred Ferrelli, a man who came to see me in my general internal medicine clinic in the mid-90s in the Philadelphia VA. He came to me because he couldn't sleep at night. Now, his was not the normal kind of insomnia. He couldn't sleep because he couldn't decide what to do about his prostate cancer. He had just been diagnosed with a localized cancer. It was just sitting in his gland. He'd met with a urologist and found out he had three treatment options. He could have the surgeon remove the whole prostate gland. The tumor be gone. He could go to a radiation oncologist who would beam the tumor away with radiation beams. Or he could do what they called watchful waiting, which means the surgeon would monitor the progression of the tumor over the next 6, 12, 18 months, and if there was any change in the tumor, he would operate on it, otherwise they could just watch it. Three choices, which he understood very well, but he couldn't decide which one to do. They each had their pros and cons, you see. Surgery and radiation got rid of the tumor. He wouldn't have to worry about the prostate cancer anymore. But they were arduous treatments in their own right, plus they had nasty side effects. He had a good chance of being either impotent or incontinent. On the other hand, watchful waiting, no side effects, no arduous treatments, but he'd live with a tumor inside him wondering when it was going to grow or if it was going to grow. And he wasn't sure he liked that idea either. So he came to me for my advice. Problem was, I refused to give him any. You see, I was a physician trained in the new paradigm of patient empowerment. I went through med school in the mid-80s. We learned then that medical choices aren't purely medical choices. They often involve value judgments where the right choice depends on a patient's own preferences. On what Mr. Ferrelli, it's a made-up name by the way, about what he thought about the relative pros and cons of living with the tumor inside you or living with some really bad side effects. I knew the right choice depended on his values and I tried to convey that to him. Frankly, I got nowhere. So I came up with a, what I hope you'll admit was a brilliant analogy. I said, Miss Frelly, what are you gonna watch on TV tonight? Hockey game, he told me. No surprise, he had a Philadelphia Flyers cap on his hat. I said, bad idea. You need to watch the men's figure skating competition on Channel 17. Now, frankly, I don't even know if there was that kind of competition on that night, but I had a good idea how he'd respond. Are you crazy? He said, I hate figure skating. My point exactly, I told him. I can't tell you what to watch on TV tonight because the right choice depends on your values, what you care about. It's the same reason I can't tell you what prostate cancer treatment to choose because it depends on your values. He nodded his head. He said, thanks, Doc, I understand. Well, then what would you do? if you were me. So ugh, I basically, I tried my best to empower this gentleman and I found out that this new paradigm of patient empowerment, of shared decision making between doctors and patients isn't so easy to work out. And that's really the main reason I wrote Critical Decisions. Because you see in the mid-70s there was a revolution in medical care. We went from an era from 2,000 years of doctor knows best of physicians not even telling the patients necessarily what their diagnoses were, of just telling them, here, take this and come back in two weeks, and the patients obediently following their doctor's recommendation. We went from 2,000 years of that to a revolution where all of a sudden the right decision lay in the minds of the patient, that we had the final say, patients had the final say about what to do. Problem with this new revolution, the patient empowerment revolution, was that we empowered patients without giving them the tools to know how to work with their doctors to make these difficult choices. And we knocked doctors off their physician-knows-all pedestals without leaving them another place to stand. I wrote critical decisions to try to show us how we can make this patient empowerment revolution work, how you and your doctor can make, medical, make better medical decisions together. I discussed the science of how people make decisions. I, I dig into stories from my own life on both ends of the stethoscope as patient and as doctor. And I lay out the way that doctors and patients interact and what we can do to improve that so we can make better choices. So I will follow up with some other videos that highlight different chapters of my book. If you can't wait for the next video, I'd suggest just go read the book today and uh, look forward to talking to you again soon. Thanks.